Welcome to Gosport, home of the Solent Enterprise. The Gosport Ferry has for over 100 years been carrying people across the harbour. Although only 200 yards across at the entrance, it opens up to a third of a mile between the ferry terminals, and almost two million people annually make the crossing. At the entrance to the naval base, the crowds are queuing to buy their tickets to tour round the dockyard. But we will have none of that bother, as for a fraction of the cost, we will be seeing everything from the comfort of our seats. Well, welcome aboard the Solent Enterprise as we begin our voyage of discovery. Our cruise today is the Round Harbour trip and we are very fortunate that it coincides with the first festival of the sea to be held here. For years, Navy Days were an annual part of local life, with thousands of visitors flocking to the area to view the majesty of the English fleet. But with a reduction in the armed services, the event was put on hold. Until now. And by the look of the thousands of people who have arrived to be ferried between the two bases, there is no lack of interest. The naval dockyard, which dates back to Henry VIII, together with the naval base, occupy a vast area, with many jetties, basins, dry docks, workshops and storehouses to accommodate the Navy's needs. The first of the foreign ships in port is the Libertad. Built in Argentina at Rio Santiago in 1963, she holds the record for the fastest crossing of the North Atlantic by a square rigger, set in the 1970s and is currently used as a sail training ship. This is a three-masted Barkentine Iskra, built in 1962, belonging to the Polish Navy. Astern of her is the Malcolm Miller, one of our own sail training ships, who along with her sister ship, the Sir Winston Churchill, take young children and adults to sea. Just arriving for the festival is the Matthew, an exact replica of the original which sailed across the North Atlantic 300 years ago. We are now passing the King's Stairs jetty. The steps leading to the water would have been used by Nelson and his officers on their way to the Battle of Trafalgar, and you can see the officers' sleeping quarters as we pass by the rear of HMS Victory. Standing squat at the rear of Number 1 Basin, behind these small craft which were involved in the evacuation from Dunkirk, lies the dome-shaped building which houses the Mary Rose. She sank at Spithead in 1545 with the loss of 700 souls. Moving along the jetty, there are a number of smaller vessels here for the festival. The blue striped hull belongs to the Mir, a Polish full-rigged square rigger, which means that all her masts carry sails which are of square rigged designs. She was built in 1988 and is here to commemorate Tsar Peter the Great's visit some 500 years ago. As we move past the Mir, there is a smaller collection of Russian naval sail training ships, varying in size, but all are used to teach young people the art of seamanship and navigation. As we round the corner into the tidal basin, we see the Russian ship Krusenstern. Built of steel in Germany in 1926, she saw service with the German Navy in the Second World War, but was taken by the Russians as a war prize, underwent a major refit, and has remained a training ship ever since. I see the Matthew has docked, and in front of her is Sir Peter de Savary's yacht Ocean Leopard. This is the Grand Turk. Already famous on TV, she is about to star in a new production of Captain Hornblower. Leaving the tidal basin, we approach the rear of HMS Invincible, and the first thing we see is one of her three goalkeeper guns, which have a firing rate of 4,000 rounds per minute. At 20,000 tons in weight, you can see how we are dwarfed by her as we motor past her stern. She is capable of carrying up to eight Harrier jump jets and ten Sea King helicopters, and one of each is on display to the public. One of three aircraft carriers in port today, in dry dock behind is HMS Illustrious, and further around the dockyard is HMS Ark Royal, 
As we move along her flight deck and come towards her bow, you will notice that it slopes upward at an angle of 12 degrees. Known as the ski jump, it was designed to enable the Harriers to take off like conventional aircraft, thus increasing the payload and increasing the flying range of the aircraft by some 250 miles. An unusual visitor to Portsmouth is the guided missile frigate HMS London. Armed with Exocet and Seawolf systems, she carries a crew of 250 and a Lynx helicopter. These two vessels are paying a courtesy visit. On the outside is a Belgian frigate and inside an Oliver Hardy Perry class frigate belonging to the Turkish Navy. In the foreground is HMS Liverpool, a Sheffield class Type 42 destroyer. She is armed with a formidable Sea Dart, a medium range surface to surface and surface to air missile system. Carrying a crew of over 300, she is powered by two Rolls Royce Olympus engines as used on Concorde, giving her a top speed of some 30 knots. In the distance, we can see the walls of Porchester Castle. Built by the Romans in the 4th century, it was originally called Portus Magnus. Later added to by the Anglo-Saxons, you can see a fine example of their work in St. Mary's Church within the walls. The Normans added the keep and it was from here that Henry VIII left with his troops to fight at Agincourt. This is HMS Bristol. The only one of her class ever built, now permanently used for training, she saw action in the Falklands. The next two we come to are both sister ships, the new Type 23 Tuke class frigates, the Marlborough, and on the inside of her is the Iron Duke. Weighing some 3,500 tons, they have a crew of only 157. They are very heavily armed for their size and carry a 4.5 inch gun. The bow is fitted with the Sea Wolf and Sea Harpoon missile systems. Sea Harpoon being a medium range surface to surface missile system formerly used to destroy enemy submarines. Also fitted with two to four conventional 21 inch torpedo tubes and from the stern operating a Lynx helicopter. The Arctic Survey Vessel Endurance, which spends six months every year surveying and patrolling the vast polar regions, has its home base here in Portsmouth. This is the training schooner Lillian of Stockholm, built of steel by C.G. Peterson in 1916. The world's largest sail training ship is the Sedov, a four-masted, full-rigged ship built in Kiel in Germany by the Krupp Company in 1921. Originally designed to carry grain and cotton from Australia to Europe, she still holds the record for the fastest crossing for a four-rigged ship from Sydney to the Isle of Wight. On the Gosport side, we are now looking at Hard Way. It was from here that thousands of Allied troops left for the D-Day invasion on June 6, 1944. Barrow Island was once the site of Fort James, a stronghold for the Royalists during the Civil War. In later years, the island was used as a burial ground for convicts and prisoners of war that died on the many hulks moored nearby. Back on the Portsmouth side, the Semaphore Tower houses the main offices of the Queen's Harbour Master. Rebuilt in 1933 after the original wooded tower was destroyed by fire. On the Gosport side, we are passing the yacht marina of Kemper and Nicholson's, the world's oldest yacht builders. Responsible for the famous J-Class yachts which competed for the America's Cup in the 20s, 30s and 40s, they also built Gypsy Moth 4 in which Sir Francis Chichester sailed solo round the world. Just passing Hesler Marina on its way into the harbour is the cable and wireless trimaran which holds a record for the fastest round the world passage. 
This brings us to the end of our cruise around the harbour and we are returning to the Gosport Ferry Pontoon where you will see the Ferry Gardens which were renamed the Falkland Island Gardens dedicated to the service personnel who lost their lives during the Falklands conflict of 1982. The warm summer evening heralds our night cruise around the harbour as we make our way to the Portsmouth jetty to pick up the rest of our guests for our gala tour. The bustle of the day has turned into the sophisticated sounds of the evening and the boats take on a new form as the slowly gathering dusk gives soft silhouettes to the ship's outlines. So sit back for a while and just enjoy taking in the sights as they unfold. As we start to make our turn here, next on the right hand side of the vessel, you will see the commercial side of Portsmouth, the Albert Johnson and Flat House Keys, and also the Continental Ferry Port. Portsmouth itself has now become the second busiest ferry port, second only to Dover. Also commencing service at Portsmouth this year is the Superstar Express, the fast catamaran service which now operates to Cherbourg. The ferry service to the continent operates to Le Havre, Khan, Cherbourg and St. Marlow. If you wish to travel further afield, you can now also travel to northern Spain, actually to Bilbao. <laughs> 